Welcome back to the news on Channels Television, coming to you live from Lagos. We're still talking business news. Primary indicators on the Nigerian Stock Exchange close today's session, largely bearish, as investors continue to take advantage of last week's strong rally. For details of today's transactions, here is Bolaji Akinwali. <laughs> Welcome to the Stock Market Report. Profit taking continued at the close of today's trading session, pushing the Osher Index down by 0.89% to 29,575.24, while the market's capitalization narrowed to 10.15 trillion naira. Tuesday's market activity was also largely lower in contrast to the volume recorded on Monday as investors traded a total of 255.2 million shares worth 3.3 billion naira in 4,812 deals. Transcorp, GT Bank and FBN Holdings were the top three most active stocks pulling 43.7 million, 42.7 million and 25.6 million shares each. Transcorp was a major price loser with a 9% decline. It was followed by FBN Holdings and Owando, while the top three gainers were Restar Express, Nimeth and Law Union and Rock. And that is on the Stock Market Report. I am Bolaji Akinwali. Thanks a lot, Balaji. Global stock markets closed sharply higher today with cautious uh, sentiment amid gains in oil prices and bank stocks as investors continue to digest the full implications of the UK's decision to leave the European Union. Here's how the market ended the day's session. That's business news tonight. The news at 10 continues in a moment. I'm Adeshewa Josh. You first. First Bank. The Consumer Protection Council has given multi choice Nigeria pats on the back for the company's compliance with all its orders. The Director General of the CPC, Dukbe Atoki, says that following several complaints, an investigation was launched into the activities of DSTV. However, the agency notes that DSTV is not in breach of its regulations. This is not a regular setting for a press conference, but the caliber of people gathered here underscores the importance of this event. It's a joint press conference by the Consumer Protection Council and MultiChoice Nigeria. The CPC is here to confirm the compliance level of DSTV with all the directives it under the company on 31st of July 2015, following complaints by some DSTV customers. We gave 11 orders and all the 11 orders were complied with. So it's not often that you score 100% even in exams. Uh, we just look at it that all these several orders amounting to 11, all of them we are able to confirm that all the 11 have been uh, complied. With, so, thumbs up to them. Yeah. TPC ordered uh, multi choice to provide a process where consumers who may be away from their base for about 14 days to be able to request for suspension of their service. And that is now available. Uh, and that also is, is available twice a year. So within a year, a consumer is able to request for sus suspension of, a, of the service for a maximum of two weeks. For the management of DSTV, complying with the directives was easy because the consumers come first in its operations. We believe our customers are first and the orders were in line with you know, our need to provide a better customer experience. So we're happy that we were able to comply with all of them in the first place. But also we are, I think even more happy that we have a better service now and it's a continuous improvement in our service for us and we look forward to even you know, working hand in hand with the CPC going into the future to ensure that we have the happiest consumer out there. The management of DSTV has also promised that in the coming months, consumers should expect better services and value for their money. And Charles Zaruka is standing by to take us through today's main new uh, sports stories. <laughs> Of 
Well, thanks, Gimba. We'll begin with golf. Jason Day has pulled out of the Rio 2016 Olympics due to concerns over the Zika virus. The world number one joins a growing list of golfers to withdraw from the games because of the mosquito-borne viral illness that has been linked to severe birth defects. Last week, four-time major winner Rory McIlroy announced he would not play in Rio when golf returns to the Olympics for the first time in over a hundred years. Adam Scott, Louis Usteisen, Charles Schwartzel, Mark Leishman and Vijay Singh are the other high-profile golfers that have already withdrawn from the Olympics. In tennis, Andy Murray made short work of his first ever British opponent at Wimbledon as he swept past wild card Liam Brody in the opening round. Murray seeded second, so off of the 22-year-old 6-2, 6-3, 6-4 in just one hour and 43 minutes. Murray goes on to face Yen Sun Lu of Chinese Taipei in the second round on Thursday. Stan Wawrinka met stiff resistance from U.S. teenager Taylor Fritz before he finally asserted his dominance in a 7-6, 6-1, 6-7, 6-4 four first round victory. And in the women's game, defending champion Serena Williams is through to the second round of Wimbledon after beating Amra Sadikovic in straight sets. Despite serving five double faults and only four aces, the world number one took just 73 minutes to record a 6-2, 6-4 win over her Swiss opponent. Serena will next play American Christina McHale for a place in the third round. And that's game, set and match on Sports News and back to Gimba with the rest of the news at 10. Ten people have been killed in two explosions at Turkey's Atatürk International Airport, Istanbul. Two suicide bombers reportedly detonated the explosives before passing the X-ray security check at the airport entrance. Witnesses said that they heard gunfire soon after the explosions. Scores of people have also been wounded and are being treated in at least 30 ambulances which rush to the scene of the attack. Authorities think the number of the dead could rise. Meanwhile, earlier today, tampers raged at the European Parliament, which debated on the UK referendum to leave the EU. Demitok Fagbemi has more on this and other stories. At the European Parliament today, a central figure in the Leave campaign, UK Independence Party leader Nigel Farage, was booed, called a liar and accused of using Nazi propaganda. But Mr Farage shot back that the EU itself is in denial. At the end of the session, the European Parliament passed a motion urging the United Kingdom to start the exit process by triggering Article 50 immediately. In the Middle East, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has called for direct negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians of a final status issues. Speaking during a joint news conference with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem, Mr. Ban reiterated that the only solution to the decades-long conflict between the two peoples is its two-state solution. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Netanyahu urged the Secretary General to help with the retrieval of the bodies of two Israeli soldiers killed in the 2014 Gaza war. Finally, Egyptian investigators said the damaged flight data recorder from the Egypt airplane that crashed last month has been successfully repaired in France. This paves the way for experts to analyze data that could help explain what caused the crash. The voice and flight data recorders, known as black boxes, arrived in Paris from Cairo on Monday so that salt deposits could be removed. They will now be sent back to Cairo so the data can be analyzed. And that's the foreign news wrap-up. It's back to you. Gimba. Brilliant. Many thanks indeed. A Nigerian pilot, Ademi Lola Odujiri, could make history as the first Nigerian to take a flight around the world. At the takeoff of the flight in Washington over the weekend, the pilot was full of excitement as he commences the four-week trip, which could take him through Europe, Africa, Asia and Australia. He will then undertake the longest sector between Hawaii and California before returning to Washington, D.C.
the only of Ife Oba Adeyeye. Ogunsi was one of the dignitaries that graced the occasion. Out of Dallas Airport in the United States of America, one Nigerian man makes history and begins his solo voyage around the world in his own plane. These are good things that we should showcase to the world. These are good things that we should portray to the world that indeed something good can come out of Nigeria. Enough of negative news. Let us celebrate good things from our beloved country. Let us celebrate good things out of the entire continent of Africa. Journey around the world was a lifelong dream for Lola and one that he's eternally grateful for. This dream has been very many years in the making and like you rightfully said, Nigeria has great men. What Nigeria needs right now is an environment to showcase our greatness. Happy sir, I'm highly honored sir. I think the president of Nigeria will be proud of you today sir. Thank you sir. As Lola takes flight. So do the dreams of many other young people of African descent. From Washington, Maria Bird, Channel Television News. And the main news again. The Federal High Court in Lagos State today demanded former Aviation Minister Femi Fani Kayode in custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission over 4.9 billion naira money laundering charges. Mr. Fani Kayode was arraigned along with former Finance Minister Nenade Osman and two others. And that's it on the news at 10 tonight. And thanks indeed for watching. I'm Gimba Omar. Good night.